Hello and hello and welcome to Metaphysical Happy Hour. I'm your host, Cassie Clayton. And I'm your co-host, Tracy Escobar, also known as the Red Couch Medium. Hey. How are you doing, Tracy? I'm alive. How are you? Yay, I'm glad you're alive. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I missed you guys last time. So I'm so glad to be back in this chair in front of the mic again. So looking forward to today's show. So who we got? Uh, to, today we have a really awesome guest. Uh, her name is Bernadette King, and she has all sorts of animal. She's going to talk to us about animals, about your spirit animals, your spirit animal totems, all the things. Got a huge resume. <laughs> yeah, very. So we're very, very excited to have her with us. Um, Bernadette, thank you so much for joining us. We are so glad to have you here. Hey y'all! Thank you so much for having me. I I'm very honored. Thank you so much. We're so honored. Fun. We are so honored. And you just said y'all, like we're from Texas, so that. Oh, <laughs> we're all Florida Cracker, born and bred. We love trucks and country music and vegan barbecues. So, you know, yeah, had no idea. Same, maybe not the same as regular barbecue, but it's my kind of barbecue. So it is. It is different. That is so funny. Well, we're so glad to have you on the show. Thank you. I know our listeners are excited. So before we even kick off the interview, hi guys on TikTok, hi everybody on YouTube, everybody on Facebook, please, please let us um, know if you have any questions, comments, um, pick her brain. That's why she's here. Bernadette's here. She's going to talk all things animal. So we're going to get started and I'm going to kick it off by welcoming Bernadette to the show and just kind of give our listeners, introduce yourself. Tell us about you. Who, who's Bernadette King? Oh, well, as soon as I get that figured out, I'll be back. But for, <laughs> for today, I'm Bernadette King. Um, just very briefly, I got my start uh, a lot of years ago doing evidential psychic mediumship work. And of course, that's the same thing in my book as evidential psychic work. And then I fell in love with tarot and the symbolism and the, you know, all that. So I did tarot and then I got good at remote viewing and, you know, pretty much everything in the whole psychonaut space. And, um, you know, people, people ask me a lot because nowadays I'm known all over the internet as mama bear and everybody knows that the work I do is everything I do. It's to save as many animals and rehab and release and support other people around the world that want to end cruelty, you know, and the suffering of animals and that includes human animals. So, you know, I've always been that way. I grew up in the South. I grew up around lots of animals of different kind out in the, you know, the wilds of Florida and certainly, you know, farm animals and horses and all that kind of thing. So I've just always really, um, to even say that I resonate with animals doesn't even really begin to describe it. I just have always, I don't know, kind of understood them and they understand me. And so uh, to that end, when Spirit called me to do more for animals. I was told to produce a tarot and oracle deck that has to do with animals. And some of you out there, um, and yes, it's kind of a shameless plug, but it is the <laughs> only but it is but. The, but it is the only deck of its kind. And that would be you'll you'll see it over that shoulder, the Arc Animal Tarot and Oracle deck. And a few years back we did a Kickstarter. The Kickstarter raised fifty thousand dollars because I I wanted to self pub. Yeah. And um it went on to sweep uh, the next year when when I could enter all the tarot awards and or you know that it just it just plowed right through all the international tarot awards and um, gold and this award and product of the year and that and the whole nine yards and people I I am so grateful to have been called on to do this because we are one of the only two decks that use um, that have images of real animals rather than just the renderings of the animals. And I'm oh, getting beautiful. so, yeah, I'm getting so many reports that the the kind of readings that people are, the accuracy and the energy, they're just, and there's my Florida alligator, you know, we got to love the gators. <laughs> um, you know, they just really, they go wild. So um, yeah. after we got kind of, there's 149 cards in the whole deck and some of I them. I didn't know there was that many animals. 149 uh-huh. cards. That's but you should mention that there are millions and millions. I mean, once you talk about different kinds of fish and yeah. you know, insects and reptiles and birds and all that kind of thing, but in those 149 cards, there's only one animal, or it's a, pardon me, two animals that I have two of that animal, and that is owls. And okay. then I have two different cards that have snakes, but other than that, it's it's all individual. 
yeah. yeah. And there's also um, mythological and fantasy animals in there, like a unicorn and a pegasus. And then there are ancient animals like dinosaurs, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And people just kept on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And I've got a resource website, whatismyspiritanimal.com. And there's like 450 animals on that site. Um, but people were like, oh, you know, go to the website. Can you just put a book together? I'm like, okay. So over that shoulder, you'll see Wisdom of the Wild Ones, the Encyclopedia of Animal Spirit Guides. And we named it Encyclopedia because it's a 702-page full-color book. And it's got 300 animals in it. It is triple the resource of anything else out there and it's also got all kinds of information about how to interpret the animal omens how to find your spirit animal how to connect with your totem animal your power animal i mean it really is an encyclopedia so yeah i do and i, I give back uh i have a foundation that gives back what i you know what i can do um yep. to animals and that's why i go through what I go through producing my own products because it ain't. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Can you yeah. tell our listeners what's an animal totem? Because I'm not sure a lot of people are going to understand that term who are not right. in the so, woo world. Well, here's the thing. Um, the, I when when the Animal Kingdom came to me and said, "Look, we really want you to to do this deck, but we want you to introduce a system for understanding us and working with our energies." That's that's a little more organized than what people in the kind of the mainstream kind of identify with, because there are a lot of people that toss around the word spirit animal, like they know what it means or that it's, it's singular only to the native American community. Um, and I grew up here in Florida. So I, I grew up entrenched in the native American community and a lot about it. I have a lot of friends in that community. Um, and it is not. I mean, people have been working with animal totems since the dawn of man. I mean, since the beginning shaman that can be traced back to, you know, eons and eons ago. So what what they asked me to do is because culture to culture to culture, you, if you use the word spirit animal. It means one thing in this culture. If you yeah. use the word totem animal, it means this. Power. So they're like, look, just do it this way. So. In my system, how I define it is a spirit animal is the animal that comes to you in your hour of need. And you may have called out for help. You may have, you know, prayed for help, meditated for help, just ask the natural world to send you support, love, inspiration. And so like you see a flamingo that shows up all the time. I'm like, why are these flamingos showing up all the time? Well, that may be the spirit world's way of saying, look, you, you need to look to the teachings of Flamingo to help you with whatever this situation is, or you may know that you want support from Flamingos and they just mm -hmm. may start showing up to show you that they're giving you support. Your totem animal is what your totem is. It's who you are. And that begins with your birth totem, which as far as I understand it from the animal world, um, is your zodiac sign because all right. zodiac systems are rooted with animals. And so once you understand that, then you, you also can connect with the animal that, that you most vibe with. Like I'm a triple Scorpio and I, you know, I through and through and through, I'm a triple Scorpio, but I don't resonate with the scorpion so much, but okay. people call me mama bear for a reason. I have been obsessed, obsessed with bears since I was a kid. And way before the woo-woo, before I knew anything, I, somebody said, well, your name has meaning. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. And I looked it up. And Bernadette is the feminine of the French name Bernard, which means brave, strong bear. Right? Oh. So I didn't even know that. I was like, you know, four and obsessed with bears. What did I know about name etymology? And so those are my totems. And then you guys would have your totems, right? And then yeah. so the power animal, I like to say that, well, if, if we're all connected, then I'm every animal that's ever been, you're every animal that's ever been or ever will be. At some point you were a teetsy fly, at some point you were a T-Rex and, you know, yeah. so we have all of that energy and that power and that magic inside of us. And so when we need bravery, right, there's all kinds of bravery. You don't have to be a tiger to be brave you you being brave might mean you've got to stay still for a while and so you've got to really work with the power of praying mantis or you might need you know the 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 patience or the ability to 
to whatever. Yes. And and only you will know that. You'll work with the animal spirit world. And so since you already are that animal, you step outside of being that animal to be yourself, to give you whatever power or magic that you are working to embody at that moment, if that makes sense. It's a little more esoteric, but it's not like you step outside of yourself and become something else. You already are brave. You already are strong. You already are confident. You already are healed. Yeah. Only human form doesn't know that, but the animal part of you, because humans are animals and humans can be your spirit animal, your totem animal and your power animal too, because we are classified as animals. Now, if we weren't classified as animals, I don't think animal kingdom would have told me that, but they did. And I was like, well, I'm not going to argue with you because uh, I'm, not. <laughs> I'm not arguing with them either. <laughs> yeah, I'm not arguing with you. So anyway, so that's, that's that over yonder. Yeah, no, I think it's pretty fascinating. Um, do you do animal communications in your readings too and things like that? Sure. You, All the yeah. time. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, anytime I do a reading, I'm talking to a human. So, yes, I do animal communication, but I know you're talking about. Touche. <laughs> do I talk to their dog, their guppy, their, yes, I do. Do I connect with their dead, you know, crossed over the rainbow bridge, whatever? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, lately, it's been really weird. I've had a lot of, um, it's been so weird. I've had a lot of people calling me, and I'm like, is your dog pregnant? No. A week later, guess what? My dog's pregnant. Is your horse pregnant? No. Uh, your full, your horse is going to have a blah, blah, blah. And the foal is going to look like, I don't, a lot of future stuff's been coming to me. And Has that's, it? yeah, it's, that's a new thing. I don't, I don't really like to delve too much with stuff like that. But yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? That's a little, yeah. So it's a new, kind of a new thing. That's so cool. Tell us our readers. Everybody always wants to know, like, did you, come into this earth plane, an animal communicator? Were you born that way? So. How'd your journey start? Every, I'm, I, I love science. It's, it's real. It's not it a floor. Yeah, it's not a Shrek. And um, scientifically speaking, there's every bit of proof that every single living thing is psychic. It's why they know that trees communicate with each other through their root systems. Yeah. It's why, I mean, you don't see cats explaining to each other what's going on. You don't, you know, see, they know based on all kinds of signals, but, but a lot of it's telepathic. That's just the way that it is. So yes, I did come into this world that way. We all do. But I was that weird kid that would say, you know, so-and-so such and such said this, or, you know, this happened, or this is going to happen, not happen so much so that I got accused of. Um, eavesdropping on people or sticking, you know, I just, anyway, so I, really? yeah. yeah. oh yeah, I, yeah, I took a lot of H-E double hockey sticks for that, for that when I was a kid, so I just went along my very business, and um, my mom was killed in 97, and we were not a spiritual or religious family, and it just sent me into a tailspin, and I thought, well, I, I guess I probably better, I, I just, I couldn't, I was not willing to accept the fact that she was just gone. I was like, she's okay. got to be out there somewhere in some form or fashion. I don't know what to believe. So I went, <clears throat> pardon me, with a whole bunch of friends to their churches. And I was like, this is not for me. And then a friend of mine said, well, have you, have you tried going to a psychic? And I was like, I, no, I, no, you don't believe that stuff, do you? Yes, I do. I was like, to be honest, one night I had enough rum runners over on the beach. We <laughs> stumbled into a psychic medium shop and I don't even remember her name, Madam Helga or whatever. <laughs> she told me things about my mom. She could not possibly have known because I was one of those people. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We've all had those, those people. Yep. And when she told me that my mom's greatest wish in life was to have been able to get out of poverty long enough to be able to feel okay spending money on one easel, one canvas and a beginner set of paint so she could paint along with that Bob guy on TV. I, I collapsed. I literally collapsed and fell out of my chair because she said, oh, and by the way, she always wanted to live near the beach like you guys did in Miami. And now she, she lives on the beach and she just paints and paints and paints and gives her paintings away for free. Oh. It changed my life. It yeah. changed my life. And that was it. I that went was it. 
it did. It went home. It, I went home and I, you know, I did my business over the coming years. And when I got the call to do this work myself, I stopped everything. I sold, I literally sold my business in two weeks and I packed up and I moved home to Florida and I became a professional psychic medium. Isn't so, that crazy? It's very crazy, but I, I've been doing it, you know, closeted for a long time, not for money or anything, just kind of practicing and getting to know things and, you know, but one day I got the call and I'm sure you guys are the same, you know, mm -hmm. you know when it had, you know, when that bell went off, yeah. there's, it, people can try to turn back or ignore it, but good luck. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. You can. So. I think it's just fascinating. This is how spirit works. When it's time, it's time. And it's kooky. Things change and a reading can change someone's life. Like literally one reading can change the whole course of your destiny. I just, yeah, that's why I do. I really harp with my students and I harp to clients. If they are not an evidential psychic medium and mm -hmm. they're just, you know, telling you things like, you know, your angels are behind you and you are so loved and supported by all of those things are probably true. But what? if they're asking you hardcore questions and you don't have any proof of why that is or is not, yeah. I think, yeah, you know? Yeah, I think for me, the reason why I loved evidential mediumship when I started this journey, for that a reason, I can prove it. Like, like I can prove that. And in my analytical brain, I... So the psychic work and predictive work, I don't like. I'm kind of like you. I just do not enjoy that because I can't prove it right then and there, right? It takes time for it to come. But an evidential mediumship, huh, that I can prove, right? So that's kind of what I wanted to ask you. What made you flip? Or So you started as an evidential medium. Well, I still do that work a lot because- You do, okay. Uh, in my mind, yeah. in my little pea brain, there yeah. is no difference between mediumship and psychic work. Like. I may not be talking to Grandma Ethel, right? Uh -huh. But if you ask me about something in your work and I'm like, well, I'm not. When I say I, it's what I'm told from the other side. Yeah. They're, you know, they're like, Sh she really needs to watch out for the lady with this accent that always wears this color. Um, most recently, I was like, who in your office thinks they are like ISIS? Like they've got a real thing for Egypt. Like she's got her hair cut like this and straight and black, like she's ISIS. And she does her eyeliner. Like who? And she was like, oh my God. And I went, stop. Don't tell me anything. I said, mm -hmm. you've got to watch out for her. She, you are a prey animal and she is hunting you. That is, his. well, when this yeah. girl told me the story of why she called, I was like, um, I'm pretty sure that's a police matter, not a psychic matter. Are you nuts? So, like, she's being stalked by this person, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's like that. So I wasn't talking to Grandma Ethel, but it's the yeah. evidence that leads up to it. Predictive stuff, like, when is this going to happen? When am I going to get this raise? I, I, I don't think I'm good at it. I just don't get that kind of information from spirit. I mean, yeah. I don't. I mean, sometimes I do. It's yeah. Rare. But if I get it, I know that I know that I know they're telling me for a reason and it is that way. Yeah. Uh, no, so. I know. I struggle with that part too in my own practice. And I think I struggle and people ask with the psychic, where is the information coming from? I think I struggle too. I don't know if it's coming from your aura. I don't know if it's coming from spirit. I just don't know. It just, it's in here. I don't know where it's coming from, but there's such a need from people to want to know, like, how does it work? Where is it coming from? How do you know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wish I knew, but you know, just from a science perspective, Dr. Dean Radin, um, he's got this unbelievably great book called Entangled Minds, where and he's a very well respected scientist. And um, he's got this theory about the earth is a biosphere and everything we think, feel, say, or do, because it's an electrical current, it just all gets jumbled in the biosphere. And so we've just made me like fishermen. Picking that up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, think about it. It's like kind of a, a modern way of explaining what the Akashic records are. It could be that. It could be, I mean, I'm the best I tell them is I don't know how to, I'm like a human cell phone. All the information's out there somewhere. Yeah. I can receive it and unjumble it and spit it back out to you. And sometimes it's, I can tell you what your birthday is and I can tell you 
yeah. what your blood type is. And I can tell, you know, and other times it's a little more nebulous. It's a little more metaphysical or symbolic. You know what I mean? I I'm think that's what I mean. It's true. I think that's why we like newer mediums, like I call them baby mediums, right? They struggle with that because um, they don't know where it's coming from. Sometimes you can get a really good reading and then sometimes it won't be as clear. So then you internalize that as your own issues of not being good enough, right? So it's yeah. all those things that we all kind of just struggle with a little bit. So I, I'm with you. I go to science. It's not just us. There's a lot of different things at play all happening at one time. I'm, all at one time. I mean, your zodiac sign, where you were born, how you were born, how you, you know, nature versus nurture. And then, you know, I'm a big fan of grit. I'm a big fan of perseverance. I mean, you, you are hardwired. Your body, your mind, your heart is hardwired to do this work. It does it naturally, whether you think it does or not. And so the more that you practice it, it's a muscle like anything else. And then you know, you stick with it long enough and you hold yourself to a certain standard long enough. And one day it's going to click it. the red gravy, baby, you know? I do. I tell everybody I'm not special. I really believe it's an ability. I'm gifted that I get to do this for a living. That's kind of, I think, where the gift is that I get to do it. But, <laughs> you know, when people say to me, I discovered my gift, well, <laughs> I'm like, here we go. There you go. Always know that's the suit. There's the there's, one. There's always one. Yeah. There's exactly. always. Yeah. Yes. I discovered my gifts. Exactly. Of course. Of course. So I tell her, it's an ability. And like you say, I'm six years ago is when mine started. My gifts started appearing, right? But I think I take accountability for having the determination, the desire, because it takes it was blood, sweat, and tears. This is probably one of the hardest things I've ever done, but with the most amazing experiences I've ever had, right? But it took dedication, desire, determination, a lot of tears shed to finally get to this point. And so if I could tell anybody out there who's looking to do this kind of work, don't give up, right? Persevere. If you're, if, well, here's what I would tell them. If you are, if you know that you know that you know in your heart, you're called to do this, to be of service to other people. And I'm not suggesting you shouldn't charge. I charge. I and I only two, what, a year and a half ago went up in my prices for the first time in nine years. Um, you know, but I do it to be of service. If you know that you're doing it for that reason, keep at it. If yeah. you have any modicum of ability of being able to be honest with yourself and you just really want to be part of the cool kids club, please don't just please stop don't. because you know, I have students all the time. They take one psychic development class or one mediumship class and they're off to the races. They're charging people. They're putting out their shingles and they sucked in class. They, yes. and there are people who just plain suck. Not that they're not, you know, they're just new or they're this or they're that. Their attitudes suck. Their work ethic suck. That, you know, they, and they're out there and the general public doesn't know. And like you said, this can be life changing for people. They can tell them something. And if they, that client believes them, it just yeah. is a recipe for a disaster. So be honest with yourself. So okay. mama bear said, be honest yeah. with yourself. No, I think that that's really good feedback because it's true. People take one class and, but they don't understand. Like you need the years of development, learning the ethics behind it, learning how to say things the correct way. You're dealing with people's feelings, emotions, life, basically, right? And I know you're probably like me. We put a lot of effort and money into trying to develop for the people so that we can be of service and do good at what we're doing. So I would encourage anybody out there, just keep going, seek out a mentor, yeah. seek out teachers. Um, yeah, because it's an amazing, I, amazing opportunity. I still go to classes. You too. I, I, I will take anybody's class that I think has a sincere message, even if I've heard like I don't need to learn about chakras one more time, but I do because. Oh, your Claire's that, again. <laughs> right. That teacher may have a way of explaining a particular chakra in a way, how to heal it, how to cleanse it, how to activate it that I haven't heard before. And I'm like, ooh, that's brilliant. Mm. You know, and I write it down. But let me tell you guys something. About the first time somebody calls you to work on a murder case because their pregnant daughter was murdered, they, they, they know she was murdered, she disappeared. Yeah. And somebody asks you that either tell them no or be be able to deliver about the first time i had if i may one more second about 10 years ago 
I booked a reading and I was reading out of my house and a squad car pulled up in front of my house. And I was like, huh. So I go out, hey, how can I help you officers? And two women in uniform said, well, we're here for her reading. And I was like, am I being investigated? They're like, no, we're police officers. And I'm like, well, okay, I did come on in. Anyway, we sit down and it is a good thing that I meditate before my readings because this little spitfire of a woman who we are best friends, we, we have been best friends since that day, no joke. She said, I want to know one thing and one thing only, and don't you bullshit me. And I was like, I, I, it's not my nature, but what do you need to know? She said, is my son going to live or die? Mm. Now, about the time somebody says that, and oh, by the way, they're in a squad car in a police uniform, that gets really real. And gets um, yeah, yeah. And good news, he did not die. Um, but she had been being told by everybody to put him in palliative care and they had all been given up on him and she didn't mm -hmm. give up on him. And didn't. does he have some significant, you know, traumatic brain injury and some things that stem from that? Yes, yes. but he did not die and mm -hmm. they're still working on it and he does improve every day. But yeah. So yeah, when that stuff gets real like that, please be prepared, please. Wow. I'm begging you be prepared. So be prepared. There's a lot that comes with this work, a lot of responsibility. And I, I get those questions too. Like, how do you handle people who come to you asking? I have several clients who've got parents who are on the verge of passing and they just want to know, like, they just want to know. Like, like that's not something I can determine. Right. I tell them straight up. I will not answer your question. I'm okay. sorry. I won't do it. And here's why. Yeah. And in some places in the world, it's illegal. I don't know if you guys know this, but in the UK, if you make a prediction and you're wrong, you can be sued and you it, it is a um some kind of something against their law or their i don't know if they call them felonies or whatever and the people can sue you if they can if they can prove that you prove said it. this and it's a wrong prediction and so I, you know like, nope. no. yeah but i don't listen i i did that once for a friend her grandmother was in the hospital and she came to me and she said i trust you is my grandma gonna pass and i was like I don't know. I, I think she's going to surprise everybody. I just feel like this great sense of peace. In my mind, I took that as she's going to rally. And what actually happened was she passed away unexpectedly, which surprised everybody because mm -hmm. all her fats, her, her vitals, her everything were on the uptick. And she crashed in a matter of seconds. I mean, mm -hmm. seconds, and they couldn't bring her back. Well, of course, there's peace when you pass over. But I, I, and I never did it again. No, it's because it's all about interpretation and we could be wrong and how we interpret the energy or how we interpret the information that's coming in. Right? It's, I tell all my clients, this is not a perfect science, this whole mediumship thing, right? We're no. all and feeling I tell it everybody, up. Not, there isn't a psychic medium, clairvoyant, remote no. viewer thing in the world that is 100% accurate 100% of the time. Nope. It's, it's not It just possible. doesn't work that way, right? It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, what advice would you give to people who want to develop their own gifts? Uh, gifts. They're all um, the <laughs> um, Well, the first thing would be to be honest with yourself and and find the teachers that you that you will resonate with. Don't don't think just because somebody says they're a teacher that they actually are. Um, mm -hmm. And credibility, right? Find yeah, some it is like that. And if you you got to go in believing and knowing that you can do this. You just may not know the, the path for yourself yet or what your core strengths are, right? Like I, I have a weird kooky thing. I hear spirit. I, I've only ever seen spirit maybe a dozen times in my career. Me too. Uh, now I see animals all the time, but people, I've only ever seen people a few times. Um, but I hear their voices, I can smell, and I, I have visions where they're in the vision, but it's not like they're standing in front of me like other people talk about. If that, I know it sounds a little bit different, but it happens in my head. In your head, yeah. And, yeah, but it's a vision. It, it's a vision. It's <laughs> That's all. Awesome. Yeah, but... Yeah, I mean, I'll see a, I'll see a place. I'll see the things around it. I'll feel the heat. I'll feel the cold. I'll smell the smells. Yeah. And, and the, but the people themselves are in my head. But the, but the environment happens as a vision right in front of me, like 
if it's snow, it, it would be like I could just reach out and touch the snow. Interesting. Yeah, it's always fascinating because everybody gets information in all these different ways. And I think it's important for all of our new people not to compare yourself to anybody, right? If, yeah. I remember when I was developing, I was so frustrated that I couldn't see. Like I wanted to see the dead people. And it was, yeah. I was comparing myself to other people. And I, it took me a long time to realize when someone says, oh, I see your grandmother has glasses, that they're not really seeing it physically. That all happens in the head, right? So it took me a long time to understand all of that. So just let telling everybody, you know, don't compare yourself. It's a journey. Yeah. Believing in yourself, I think is important, right? Believing that it can be done, that it's real, right? Well, yeah, but also believing in spirit. I mean, you know, this is how I describe it to students. I'm like, look, let's say that you were passed over and you desperately wanted to get a message to your family and you show up, you know, you, the, the discarnate show up at a reading and you're like knocking on that medium's head in that door and it's like as if you were screaming for help, but no one could hear you. Yes. Do you, I mean, do you want to do that to people on the other side? Well, you lead into a class like that and that gets their attention, but double Dutch quick. And a lot of times that gets them over their hurdle. You know, most people go, most people go into this wanting to help, right? I do it because I never wanted anybody to experience what I experienced when my mom was killed. Never, ever, ever. And, and if they had, I wanted to be able to give them a soft place to land. Yeah. But, you know, we, we, we tend to think in this reality about us, about our reputation and how we're going to appear in front of people and we're this and we're that. But, but few people start out thinking, well, if I can talk to them at that moment in a reading, that means they're alive at every other moment. I've got to establish a relationship with that world. I've got to get them to trust me. I've got to be a trustworthy, you know, vehicle for them, a voice for them. And I don't want to leave them hanging. I, I want to get over myself because I hate the thought of somebody standing on the other side going, Bernadette, what? come on now. I, mm -hmm. that turns me inside out. I can't, you know. Yeah. Mm -mm. You know. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a natural rescuer. What can I say? Uh -huh. Well, speaking of rescuer, I want you to tell the story of how you started with the animals. How you got into the animal portion of it all. How I got into the what? The animals. How you got interested in the animal. What inspired you for the deck? The whole showing up at your house story. Oh, yeah. So that's a good story. I was yeah. going on along about my merry business. And um, I started my animal website because I was told to because I needed one more project in my life. <laughs> and I walked out one morning and I was sleepy and I walked out and I stopped and I thought, oh my God, how did a rabbit get in the house? And then I was like, and then there was a fox. And the next thing I knew, I, I kind of came out of my fog and my whole place was just filled with animals, like down my hallway in my living room. And that they just wanted to sit and chat and they laid out the entire, the entire vision. And I will tell you why I, I did it because what they were describing, I'm like, you have any idea what it's going to take to do that? They were mm -hmm. like, yep. And when I started asking people about it, I got told by every single, because these cards are larger than normal cards, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, that's not going to sell because people don't like big cards. And then, oh, there's too many cards. Oh my God, your price point, that's never going to sell. You're going to lose your butt. No, I didn't. No, no you I didn't. I still told you not to lose my butt. Now, I am, I am getting printed by the end of the year. I will have a smaller version of these that are more the like average size cards and it'll only be a tarot deck and okay. it'll just be a regular 78 cards. Cause I've had so many requests for that. I'm like, give the people what they want. Right. Right. Um, but there was a reason that they wanted it to be this size and this comprehensive because in the deck, is also a 272 page full color book oh, with nice. the descriptions of the tarot card and of what the animal is as a spirit totem and power animal and then there's a lot of other information in there about how to interpret the signals and all that kind of thing and i was told it's too big your price point blah blah that's not true so that's that's how that came to be and yeah. you know they didn't tell me to write the book but i did check in because when i got the you know when i People, so many people asked for a, a book book without the cards. Okay. I, well, I mean, if I did the deck big, because there's 149 cards in the total deck, right? Yeah. 
And I was like, but I just don't want to redo what other people have done. They were like, well, just do however many animals you think you can fit in a book. And there are 300 animals in the new book. And the only reason I stopped at 300 animals is because my printing company was like, we can't bind. Nobody in the world can bind more than what you're talking about. Okay. Then it'll have to be split in two volumes. And I'm like, uh, I'm not doing a two volumes. No, I'm not going to do that. No. How long so, did it take yeah. you? I got, I'm just curious. <laughs> Because it's an on, people who don't realize doing a book is an undertaking. <laughs> it 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 took almost two years. Yeah, almost two years. And then we were in the Kickstarter, and it it has taken it has taken over a year. I will just be able to get people their books in what are we in June uh, by August because. The pandemic shut down the shipping, right? Are they coming then, from China? China? Oh yeah. yeah. Then my shipping costs, I'm I'm paying eleven thousand dollars more for shipping <laughs> and paper costs than what I raised in my Kickstarter because oh. that's what happened. That's what and happened. then there were more delays and more delays and more delays and more delays. And I was like, I am not putting all of this money, all these books on this ship for them to go sit in some harbor somewhere. And I have two friends that waited four months while their ships sat in the harbor no. four months and they didn't know where everything was and the shipping company couldn't tell them the printing company couldn't tell them i'm like we're waiting out this storm yeah. and everybody all of my backers because we when, when i ran another kickstarter for the book and we raised fifty thousand well fifty five thousand dollars and other than two people who lost their minds everybody has been so patient and so kind they get it and then when I was like, I really thought, I was like, okay, we're clear to go. And I was like, we're going to have it in April. And then I got an email, um, you're being censored. And I was oh. like. So it's just one thing after another. Yeah. But we're in the clear now. Everything happens for a reason. And I don't know what that reason is yet. But I, I you know, and I tried to make it up to everybody. I sent them a bunch of swag. I sent them like free altar cards and free um magnets and all that kind of stuff and you know so i'm eating shipping twice but i just felt so bad everybody had to wait all that time but i'm i feel confident when they get the book it will be well worth the wait like i said we called it an encyclopedia because that is exactly what it is it is beautiful it's a coffee table book for sure is it no. oh yeah there isn't any more comprehensive book on this planet about spirit totem power animals not one and if somebody else wants to more than 300 animals. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> yeah, I will back your Kickstarter. Call me. Well, yeah. well, congratulations on your success with that. I think that's phenomenal. I wanted to ask too, I'm asking all these questions just personally yeah. too. Um, your decision to go from corporate America to completely spiritual, how hard was that to make? Well, it wasn't really hard. I've owned my own business my whole life, and I was in the entertainment business. I made a child and young adult actors in Hollywood for many, many years, taught acting, that kind of thing. So yeah. it really wasn't leaving corporate America. No, okay. it was leaving sanity of stage mom. You get crazy. I was <laughs> like, oh, gee, you know, metaphysics, incense, and, and, and meditation every day. Yes, yeah. that sounds so much better. Um, it wasn't hard. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm an all in person. It, when I take a wild hair, I'm all in. And you know how Scorpios are. We're all about death and rebirth. True, right? True. Yeah. So, well, I think that's fascinating. I just love hearing your story and hearing about your success. And I know Cassie's going to jump all over those cards and book. And mm -hmm. she's our big animal lover on the show. Yes. Aww. Yes. Yeah, she is. So at this part of the show, we're going to request anybody want to pull a card? Leave us a comment. We'd be happy to pull a card for you. If you've got any questions for Bernadette. Tracy, and Cassie, know. do you want me to pull a card for each of you to tip things yeah. off? Yeah. Get started. Oh, we love that. Yes. Do thank you. Want, do you want, well, this is interesting. Oh, it oh. jumped. So in my head, I said your name simultaneously and you saw this one get the tallest out of the deck. Now in my deck, the snake is the tower card, right? Which you know, you guys know the tower card. It can seem really, really super scary. And, you know, snakes are, people have a bigger fear of snakes than they do of dying. Can you believe that? It's actually true. It's true. It is true. Um, but I don't ever see this card as the dun, 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 dun. 
let other people see it. But then again, I'm used to death and rebirth. It's kind of my thing. I, I can either just leave you all with the card and the animal, or I can tell you what I'm picking up psychically for the both of you. Meaning by me talking to my pretty blue pit, because this is a pit viper. They're mean, mean spirited critters, but, um, but they're beautiful. <laughs> kind of like a lot of people in Hollywood, beautiful, but mean spirited. So, <laughs> so if you want, I will, but I honestly think this is both of you. I truly do. Oh, I think nice. both of you are going through so much of a metamorphosis that, mm -hmm. that your followers don't know about and your readers and your, there is like some big, it's big, whatever it is. And I think you probably might be cooking it up together, but it's almost like there's three things. There's like Tracy's thing, Cassie's thing, and then there's the thing together that you have, but yes. all, they're like three pillars, but all three pillars, I just see them growing up and getting extended and growing up. So whatever this is you guys are planning, it's buh, 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 big. And you've already been through the, oh my God, dun, 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 <laughs> lightning and everything. <laughs> Everywhere from here is up. I'm in for it. I'm in for it. it. Yes. And if I may, you notice this is blue. We all yeah. know blue is the throat chakra. You got, I mean, you, we, it's obvious you're in the communications business, but it's, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than, oh, I want to expand my TikTok audience or my YouTube audience or whatever. It's bigger than just communication. It's just way bigger. So like, if it's about communication, that's fine. But there's a huge, like, company or product, product, maybe, I don't know, but like a foundation that's huge and the communication is the byproduct. That's it. The communication is the byproduct. Does that make any sense? Makes a lot of sense. Yes. Thank there you. you. Ta-da. Fire psychic medium. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thank oh. you. Yeah. I'm going to receive that and accept it. And Me claim too. it as mine. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm yeah, claiming does, it. Does it resonate? Does it make sense? Yeah. So for me, I have my book coming out this fall. So it's oh, almost ready. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yay. What's it about? Um, it's called You Can Be a Medium. Again, <gasps> about the ability gift issue and that anybody can do it. So I tell, I share my story in the book and then I give so how I became a medium through the exercises and stuff. But I want everyone to know anybody can do it with the determination yep. and will. Are you self-pubbing? Yep. Let me know. You know, I'll introduce to my audience. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. yeah I love to support other people. Oh, you know? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. obviously. So. It's been a year and a half in the making. So again, it's a torturous, torturous. <laughs> it's so torturous. Well, I was really fortunate. I was able to hire research assistants. So oh, they would go out and they would find all the symbolism and all this. And I'd be like, okay, well, we're going to add this or anything, you know. Oh, um, good. Yeah. Yeah. Because if I had to do all the research and. No. no. I'd be trolling out of one side of my mouth. Like, <laughs> exactly. So I'm hoping to have my book and a workbook to go with it and teach classes around it. And so I'm hoping this stems into a whole branch. Huh? You're not, you're not hoping, you're not wishing, you're not wanting, you're not dreaming, you're choosing. I'm choosing. Yeah. This <laughs> yes, is a choice you're making, yes. and there's absolutely nothing standing in your way. Well, thank you. Thanks for that support. I'll be calling you when it's out. <laughs> yes, I, mean, I will. Sincerely. Thank you. Thank you for that support. So yeah, big things coming for us in the show and just everything. So it's a really good place in life. Yes. But we have Keith Fletcher, and I think he might be one of your followers. Hey! Yeah. I love him. He, he is on. I love him. I think he's he watching from he YouTube. Keith Fletcher. When he gets his wind up under him, Mr. Keith Fletcher is going to be a bang an exceptional psychic medium he already is he's just got to have the practice he lives in he lives somewhere in maine where like oh, does he nine, yeah there are like nine people that live there because it's maine you know yeah. you know i love you but he is he's he's yes he is very sensitive yeah. and when he gets it together it's gonna be holy guacamole but yes okay well, i'm gonna so, pull a card so everybody pull a card for you if you've never had a reading from um from her, so she's gonna pull a card first. Cassie, are you pulling a card too? I am, yes. Okay, yeah. let's all three pull our cards and I'm gonna hold mine up. And that way I wanna, I wanna see if they, cause I'm not setting an intention. The only intention I'm setting is that he gets whatever he needs at this moment yeah. based on what's yeah. in the card, you know? 
So I'm going to go first. I pulled two cards from my own deck. I have a messages from above card okay. deck. Um, so I pulled Awakening. So you got the Awakening card. Okay. Um, then the Awakening card is all about Keith. Welcome to your new path of self-discovery and self-development. And huh, the, if you want to see the card has these doors, right? And I just feel like spirit gives us these opportunities and they will open these doors for you. You just have to be willing to walk through them. So keep going. Don't let anything stand in your way. I also had a second card that fell out and it's called the acceptance card. So whatever kind of is going on in life around you, I think acceptance is kind of a key focus maybe that you need to be zoning in on. And it just says surrender to what is and what will be because it is what it is, right? So learning to find acceptance even an acceptance in your gifts and your abilities and, and everything along your journey. But I'm really, really excited for you. I just get this energy of excitement when I tap into you. So I think big things are eventually coming for you. Just keep on the path. And yes, who's next? Cassie, yes. what you got? Um, so I'm pulling from the Dreams of Gaia deck. And Ooh. so um, I pulled the King of Fire. And um, just from this card, like I, it, fire is um, associated with your wands. And so your, um, for me, that's all about creativity and you're in this space of being able to create and it's, and it's bringing out, it's bringing out of this really amazing side of you where you're just able to completely flourish um, and flourish in your gifts. And so it's a very exciting time for you. And there's even a little lion down here at the bottom of the card. I love that. Well, mm -hmm. wow. Okay, cool, you guys. So interestingly, this is super weird because if we were in Vegas, we'd be like, oh my God, we won the jackpot. Sorry, guys, I got this weird thing going on with my cameras for some unknown reason. Every now and again, it goes strangely out of focus. But um, in my deck, I have um, oracle cards that are, are cordoned off in like um, groups. And here are two cards from the moms and babies part of the oracle deck. And it's a macaque and a capybara. And, yeah, that's the only bummer with having my camera so far away. But it's both, you know, both the, the females um, nursing their children. And why I think this is so very interesting for you, Keith, is that what I'm, what Cappy and macaques were telling me, I, wow, I, I don't know that I would have, I don't think I would have guessed this about you, but you don't nurture you like you 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 do things you go to work you 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 learn about all your metaphysics you're always there to help others you're, but you don't nurture you the inside of you it's almost like you feel like the learning process is a separate thing from the the heart process and it's not it's really not and so i i would say that you know we all have we all have feminine and masculine qualities inside of us and i'm not suggesting that men can't be great nurturers i'm not but i think you're being told to tap into your more feminine aspects the more nurturing side of your aspects but turn that inward like this is going to sound strange i know this it's almost like you have to nurse yourself. It, you have to feed yourself. You have to nurse yourself. But it's come twice. And I'm wondering, I, I keep hearing two, 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 two. I'm wondering um, if you are seeing double digits lately, a lot of double digits, in particular twos. I don't I don't have access to the chat. Oh yeah, I do. I can see it. Keith, type in type in there if you're seeing double digits a lot lately. But anyway, so there's the message from the animal world and from all of us. So mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, cool. OK, next I have Kelly. She's going to be on TikTok. So we're going to do okay. Kelly on TikTok. TikTok. Okay. Tickety, tickety, talk, talk, talk. We've got a couple on TikTok that we're going to bring and on. And Keith did say all the time. OK, there you go. All right, I'll <laughs> see you on Facebook, Keith. We'll talk about that two, two, two thing. <laughs> uh, let's see. So for Kelly, I pulled the peace card, Kelly. And Kelly, what I feel like for you, there's been so much turmoil in the past year. Like, it just feels like when I'm tapping in, there's so many, there's more lows than highs is kind of what it feels like for you. So I know that you're searching for a sense of peace and just kind of understanding. And I think that just 
comes with zooming out a little bit, right? We can all get so bogged down on what's going on around us and with life because we're just so close to it, right? And that's where it becomes really overwhelming. If you can take a spiritual journey and kind of just zoom out and see the big picture, focus on self-love, focus on self-healing, focus on forgiveness. So all of those things about self-development will help you. I know, I feel you're gifted and that you're meant to be bigger than you are. And that's a really powerful statement. You're meant to be bigger than you are. So start, trust me, just start on your journey and looking for peace and understanding, okay? All right, Cassie. So um, the card that I pulled is um, the, um, it's the one of air, which is, is your sword. So again, it does speak to kind of that conflict that you've been having in, in those trials. But what I love about this card is if you focus right here, the, the dragon is actually holding the gem like this, like in his hands as if he's being able to look at things from above and dragons are extremely powerful mystical beings and so i i think that it's there there are these situations that are coming up that you really have that ability and that power to kind of take that that outward look and and just kind of gain a new perspective on it and i think it's just going to like allow you to like kind of let go of some of the emotions around it and then just be able to like take that magical energy and just soar with it. There you go. Okay. The second I connected with Kelly, I heard that older song by George Benson, um, Turn Your Love Around. Do you guys know that song? Turn your love around. Don't you turn yep. me around. <laughs> okay. I, there is something going on with the subject of love for you, uh -huh. I, I, I get, I mean, listen, who isn't, who isn't working on self-love, right? But right. there is a, um, I, I got the, the king of wands, the tiger inverted. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's funny. That's timing. Because I was about to say, see, this, this is why I love my job. I was about to say, somebody dogged you out. Because King of Wands Inverted is about that, you know, somebody that was not loyal, somebody <laughs> that was not honorable, and mm -hmm. somebody dogged you out. And there it goes, Bow Wow, oh. that's a big dog. <laughs> Holy guacamole. Holy, she's got three jokes. Here it wants to speak. <laughs> so whatever this love thing is that's going on, and, and that can be romantic love, it can be familial love, it can be friend love. And, you know, I'm not deep enough into your energy to know, and I don't want to call you out on TikTok, because this is my debut on TikTok, right? And here I am. Out of here you are. <laughs> out of focus and whatever. But um, I just feel like if it's you that's been disloyal and dishonorable, turn your love around, right? Don't dog other people out. But if it's other people that have done that to you, and it might be both, this is your time to, to, to shed all that and... You, you want to be the king of wands upright, right? You want to be your kitty kitty upright and you only want to allow people in your life that are going to treat you with respect and treat you loyally and treat you honestly. And if they can't, they have to go. That's it. Exit stage right. So I hope that's helpful, Kelly. I hope that's helpful. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We have a couple more. on tickety, tickety, talk, talk, talk. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next one is Stouffer. I'm going to pull a card. Stouffer, what a great name. Yes. So I pulled a card already. So here we go. I got the, I have a card lined up for all the people that I have on TikTok. So I pulled wow. cards and they're lined up so we can do speedy readings in the next five minutes. All right. Got it. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. I, so I got the judgment card. And to me, the judgment card is the absence of self reflection and love. But what I think it really means is like, stop beating yourself up, right? We can be our own worst critic, we can be our own harshest critic. Right. I know for me, too, I can overanalyze everything. And so anytime I get this card, it means it's time for me to do some self-reflecting and some self-love work. Right. So that I'm not taking everything personally or that I'm not beating myself up for some of the decisions that I've made or choices that I made or whatever. But anyway, the judgment card. So time to start forgiving, letting things go. I get the picture of the lantern that's being flown away. So I don't know. Maybe that's kind of some ceremony of a release. But and lots of love around judgment. 
and self-love. So I hope that helps. Who wants to go next? Cassie does. Um, so I got the seven of air, and this is actually um, kind of an interesting card because the way that this card is, uh, um, so this would be associated with the seven of swords. And seven so swords. basically what this card is, it's kind of about the something that's being taken from you. But in this particular case, I feel like it's you that's actually taking away from yourself. Um, you're actually being the, the, the quote unquote robber here. Um, and so in this, in the way it's depicted here is, you know, it, it's, you are kind of seeing this angel like character that's kind of, um, holding on to, um, the, the book and the, like, he's kind of holding on to his tools. And I, and I think that that is saying, yeah, open up to those, but also don't necessarily just rely on your tools, rely on don't forget to rely on yourself and what you are actually getting. That's so interesting because I got the goat, which is the um, six of pentacles. And mm -hmm. that's all about those just rewards and, you know, great opportunity and great things coming. But the reason that goat or ram wanted to be that is because in accordance with this particular card, a goat only needs, a, ma a mountain goat only needs literally two square inches of space to be able to put their little hooves, no matter how big they are, up on that, that ledge. And you see them, you know, on YouTube and they're like shimmying up a mountain this way. And you're like, you're going to fall. They never fall. And um, they're like, think, think, think up the mountain. And so I, I would say that uh, you're being told really uh, step one is Tracy. Step two is Cassie. And step three is, you know, if you've got that much opportunity, you jump on that like a mountain goat jumps on a mountain ledge, honey, and you go for it. But what's interesting is you got the judgment card, which is about balance, which is the two. Cassie, your card, the, the symbolism on that, could you hold it up again? You had a very similar um, kind of thing on your, well, it's okay if you can't find it, but you, you've got a balance thing, I think, being told to you today also. So um, I would say maybe take a look into that. Ah, thank you. Awesome. Well, we're running out of time. So let's tell everybody where they can find Bernadette. Okay, so um, you can find me on Facebook, Bernadette Carter King. Uh, you can find me at any of my websites, whatismyspiritanimal.com, buildingbeautifulsouls.com. You can find me on YouTube. Uh, I'm pretty visible. You can find You're me. visible. Yeah. Are you Google Googleable, Bernadette? Are you Google? I'm Googleable. I'm Googleable. For better or for worse, I'm Googleable. Uh, me too. We're Googleable. <laughs> well, yes. we appreciated you being on the show today. I know everybody mm -hmm. loved all um, your great information. I can't wait for your books to get here and everything. And we are the show will support you 100. percent So thank you uh, again. Well, thank you all very much. It's such yeah. a such an honor and pleasure. So yeah, so much fun. Yeah. Cassie, where can people find you? Uh, they can find me at Stargazers Unite, um, creating brands, logos, and websites that radiate your soul to the world. So. I just love that. Yes. Thank Tracy, you. where can people find you? So I am the Red Couch Medium, Tracy Escobar, on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. So that's where you can find me, and you can book a reading on my website, www.theredcouchmedium.com. And with that, we're going to close another wonderful show. Again, Bernadette, thank you so much for being our guest My and giving pleasure. readings. It was amazing. So good night, everybody. Until next time. Bye.